Sure thing. Um, chatting Tim here. Yeah, it feels like we haven't talked about codes and practices for like a year. Um, Vicky, did you did you get the um, Google um, Sheet link that I sent you a little while ago? Vicky, you're on you're on mute. I said I just got it about half an hour ago, and I haven't had a chance to really look at it. Yeah, no, no, um, yeah. no problem. I just wanted to make sure that 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 you had it. I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, should have sent it out to you a while ago, but um, uh, the important thing is is that you have it. Um, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but um, I like. Are are you on Teams, and is there like a lot of documentation or any correspondence that's been happening with? With that, so far, I I was able to um, I I asked Mike to resend me the link because I didn't realize that it had been sent out earlier. And the the only thing on there is a kind of introductory package, which I shouldn't say only thing. It's a like comprehensive mm -hmm. list of anything that goes to a new member. But I was able to just like testing it, add a couple other folders. And I added one for work we'd done on the standards and design manual, including a series of mm -hmm. edits that we'd made. Oh, cool. And, yeah. and I was thinking about, you know, one thing I'm not clear on was the sort of matrix that I, I was only tangentially involved with. Um, there were a couple of meetings there where I, I sort of tuned in for part of the meeting. And that, that, was, that was, was a result of some extensive coordination with the city. And that would be a good thing for us to have there. We could have our own codes committee folder on teams uh, just to make sure that we can always find the most recent document yeah yeah i think every like everybody um or or each committee should have their own folder um for whatever reason um my uh my wife calls it you got teams <laughs> that like microsoft teams is just a, a really not a not a super great platform um and I like I have a pre-existing um, Microsoft or Hotmail email address um, that Mike sent me the um, uh, the the invite to my Gmail account because the Hotmail account is like hoochdog07 at hotmail.com, <laughs> a pretty embarrassing high school era email address. So I've been trying to figure out how to get in and and I can get into Teams with that embarrassing address, but there's nothing showing up. So yeah, I, I, I had him send um, send him an email today and, and hopefully he can send me an invite to that folder email address and I can finally get in. But I've, I've had no luck um, to date, long story, long story short uh, with, with that. So that, that's, Vicki, that's kind of why I forwarded you just a few things earlier today, um, just from, and some of our previous correspondence from, from way back in March, um, from, from when we basically had our last subcommittee meeting. Yeah, th <clears throat> thanks for doing that, Jeff. I I've been able to get into Teams, but it wasn't until recently that I did for the first time. I, I don't know if I also missed the announcement or just missed the email, but um, had a little set of issues to work through because I use Teams a lot for um, my work as a county employee, but you can actually just, you know, log out, switch profiles or whatever. Right. Um, so started to avail myself of that just like within the past week or so. Um, but yeah, we could probably easily make our own subfolder or, you know, our folder and just kind of consolidate what we're working on there. Yeah. Um, that sounds important. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that, that I had a similar thing um, uh, to, um, uh, to what you were just saying, Tim, and for some reason your name is showing up as Jeff. Um, I, I, um, I, I uh, have my own Microsoft account um, for, for Office 360, a personal account, plus I have an Office account at work under a different name, so I actually have sort of three of them, but 
as you say, the one that the city gives you a link to, all I did was click on it. And, and, you know, as long as I don't use Teams for anything else, I think every time I open Teams, it will show me those two things. I was on another city commission as part of place for the closure of paper streets and alleys. And that's on there too. So any, anything in my relationship with the city is on Teams, you know, when I open Teams, it's whatever intersection of the Venn diagram of the city and me is going on. Very is, is Teams strictly a way to share documents or are there other functions that we're expected to be using? It, it looks like there's like a calendar app. There's kind of like a messaging app. Um, yeah. it's, it's kind of like what you would have like on Google, like having kind of in one kind of place. Now you could have your Google um, Google Meet or and Hangouts, uh, share your Google Sheets, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I guess that it's it's basically a workspace for that. But um, Tim and Mark, I'm sure you can do a little bit more detail on it. Yeah, that's that's it. That's the idea is you know communication through chat or other it's really a chat and then. Um, document library is probably maybe the most relevant thing for us. I'm happy just to continue communicating through email unless we get directed to kind of communicate solely through Teams, which I don't think we have that expectation yeah. right now. Good. Um, and then, which is one other thing that might be useful, but it's escaping me right now. Yeah, so like basically like a Google Drive link or like a Dropbox is, is like the Microsoft Teams function. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a wiki and there's a, and there's chat and there's, um, you know, there's, there are some other functions, but unless, I mean, the thing that I always thought would make sense would be to, to if you were working on a project and, um, and I've never worked in an office with Slack, but that you would have kind of a project folder that has a paper trail of, it's not just a big messy word document which is what the standards and design manual became but like let's say we had this matrix we might find a reason that we want to have our communication about sort of our current agenda and actions like posting a to-do list and or or even just kind of a quick record of this meeting and then you know going forward whenever we meet again and what what you know look almost like our own sort of you know tree commission meeting to track that because what what I what I am hopeful of is that that by getting the stuff off the local folder, I have a tree commission folder with three years worth of stuff I decided to download from email and save, and I just don't want to do that anymore. I want I want to be able to find that somewhere else, and um, and there are a couple. I, I actually uploaded meeting agenda packets that I had handy. I think there was one on there and. You know, just because I'm trying to get rid of that that folder on my desktop because it's too random and kind of out of date, but I, I feel weird about getting rid of all of it. So, yeah, this is a great like great area like great file repository. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, um, so let's see where where should we where should we begin? Um, I guess. Tim, do you have any update as far as like where things, or Tim, or Tim and or Mark, um, where things are as far as like the planning process and, and where the, the code kind of aspect is coming into play at this point? Or are we still kind of in the flume kind of territory? Like what, what, what's uh, what, what, yeah, where are you guys like with, with timing that, that they know of right now? Yeah, it's a little it's a little unclear only because it's been variable and it keeps shifting. Um, I think mostly for good reason. Um, you know, not not just dragging feet, but there's reason that they've kind of shifted the project schedule a little bit. I have a slide I can share if I, I'm gonna just try to go ahead and share my screen. Um, no, it looks like it's disabled, I guess. I don't know if Joe is tracking along and can change that setting or grant me permission. Yeah, Tim, one moment. Let me get that setting squared. Okay, on. sweet. You Thank should you. be good now. Why don't you try it? 
Yep, looks good. Um, so at the risk of looking well prepared, I just have a slide deck here. Um, hey. I didn't get very far. Uh, <laughs> my neighborhood association meeting really kept me out till about 750. But uh, anyways, you know, this is the most recent schedule or Gantt chart or whatever for Seville plants together. And so Vicki, I know you're, you're new to the commission. I have a sense you probably have a familiarity with Seville plants together and all of this. Yeah. So from the beginning, um, the tree commission has had a liaison or representative on this steering committee for the comp plan update, which includes the affordable housing plan. Um, and then we'll culminate in the third piece, which is the zoning ordinance amendments. Um, and the zoning piece is kind of critical as you can understand, that's like the legislation or the requirements that is meant to produce the outcomes that are contained in the vision that is the comp plan. Um, so we've been working, you know, there's, we're kind of on the shoulders of people, uh, former tree commissioners, including Paul Josie and others who really kind of were leading this charge um, and had a pretty comprehensive, extensive chart in terms of like the issues. Mark, you obviously had a lot of involvement in that as well. And um, before COVID hit, we were, you know, kind of focused on that. But momentum disrupted last year. Um, and then with the way that the engagement for the housing plan and the comp plan, um, you know, required a lot of adjustments to the schedule. So we still haven't started the zoning piece. Uh, you can see that it's kind of sort of scheduled to start here at the end of summer. Um, I haven't heard anything and you can see this wasn't this is a end of April timeline. It was this was presented to the planning commission on June 29th. So, you know, that's just under a month ago. I'm assuming no, no schedule changes have been made as of today. Um, but that's the timing piece. All along, we've kind of wondered how to approach this and how to structure and format our feedback and recommendations to the consultant team. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, one approach would be like a very surgical set of recommendations that say this particular subsection of code, we could reword the language to, to, to read differently. Or would we have a different approach, which is more like vision driven and more like issue driven and let the consultants kind of understand how the actual language in the code would need to be modified to achieve those bigger, more conceptual um, feedback items. And we don't have a lot of direction on that. I've inquired, and because that part of this Seville Plans Together project hasn't started yet, I don't know that the answer is even clear at this point to the team, which is okay, it's fine. Um, but as we kind of continue to wait and, and bide our time, I think personally that we might be better off having like a less is more type of approach and have a clear and cohesive set of recommendations mm -hmm. and maybe provide a little bit of, uh, you know, images or other rationale and justification for them and approach it from that perspective as opposed to kind of line by line wordsmithing the existing code. Could we do a combination have possibly suggested specific language to go along with the broad recommendations? I think we could, yeah, it could be like a hybrid approach or, yeah. you know, comprehensive. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the examples of that maybe being necessary is actually in the definitions section of the zoning ordinance. And um, what we learned is that the definition of parking lot is having a massive it's massively consequential in terms of like outcomes for tree canopy. Right. Because apparently parking lots are exempt from certain planting require minimum requirements. Um, I don't remember exactly like the code section or what the actual language was that leads to that exemption, but that would be a good area to go, go back to and drill mm -hmm. down on and maybe provide specific feedback on what we would recommend for that. Yeah, what, wasn't it something like um, like parking lots that were related to a commercial 
uh, property were basically exempt. Like parking lots were only parking lots if they were kind of more of a municipal um, type lot, something yeah. along those lines. You're right, Jeff. That was the gist of it. Yeah, if it was like a standalone use, if parking was the primary use, then it, then you had to meet the minimum requirements. But if it was just like, you know, ancillary to the other use, whether it was office or whatever, then it wasn't applicable. And I can't imagine that was deliberate or like planned, mm -hmm. but but it's in there. <laughs> and so we can yeah. try to undo that and, and have parking lots have not just any minimum requirements, but like, you know, fairly decently robust planting requirements, um, especially if that's what's contributing directly to like urban heat island effect. Right. I I um I was just as you as you were speaking, just checking a hunch that in the on teams in the onboarding folder there is a document. It's document K that is I think Paul put together basically every tree related ordinance in the city. There are 18 pages, and starting on page three everything is drawn from the zoning ordinance, which means that there are 15 pages of stuff that might be considered in the zoning code rewrite because that's part of the zoning code. So including the parking lot thing. Um, okay. We, you know, we um, might consider making a copy of that, you know, and, and, and yeah. somehow having it be our committee's annotated copy of of the code or something. And, and I agree with like, how do we figure out, you know, two or three things that we really want to work towards because I've turned over a new leaf and I'm not, I'm not trying anything that involves a unified field theory approach anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I end up trying to rewrite the entire code by myself and it's like, I'm not doing that. Um, Mark, out of curiosity, is, is there any way that, that you can send an invite um, via Teams or that probably have to come through? Um, I, I think it Mike comes through, it comes through Mike. I just contact yeah. Mike because you, you would have an, an individual. And if, if anything ever went wrong with it, I don't know what I'd do besides contact Mike again. So I don't, I don't yeah, have and, and, that's, or... and, and like I said, that, that's what I did earlier today. Um, mm -hmm. Shot of an email and Hopefully, hopefully that'll, that'll help. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we had like, I wonder where we will be in the, the, I guess the timing um, when it does get to the point where they have proposed, um, you know, the proposed code revision, like, do we, present something prior to them writing or do we have a chance to look at you know what the revisions are and then comment like that would be good to know like where we can step in in the process because I think that'll help us kind of hone in on kind of where we want our recommendations to be and, and how detailed um, they should be right. I would think we'd want to jump in as soon as we can. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Be proactive and preemptively provide a, a right. wish list, if you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I think so. And then that creates more space for like back and forth and kind of explaining right. and engaging. Dialogue. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I think we had identified like the buckets of revisions, like maybe not the actual content that would be, you know, what we would recommend or request, but it was kind of like the minimum, all the things that apply to minimum requirements, like site planning and design and engineering type requirements. You know, there'll be a lot of things that I think we would identify and request. But then there's other portions, I think, of the zoning ordinance that are at least as important for outcomes, like the inspections and enforcement uh, mm -hmm. language yeah. in there, uh, kind of like the administrative stuff, right? Um, the section about replacement of damaged trees during during the pro during construction process or a penalty, like those are kind of more of the administrative end of things and not so much just how you design a site. Um, 
And even like the site plan section, you know, there's minimum requirements of, of your development, but I think we would want to look at the um, site plan content, like the application requirements. Because Mark, I know you, you've experienced this, like trying to review or just understand site plan applications, we almost need like another requirement to have some of the already required information provided in a layered kind of like complete way. So you see utilities and you see the grading plan, you see the landscaping plan, like just having them, having the applicants provide one more sheet or one more exhibit as part of the requirement to kind of put all that information in one place. And I think that would lead to less oops moments during development and less loss of existing trees. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and then the um, yeah, like the inspection kind of enforcement part of it. Um, you know, when we had um, um, in the in the, pre in the previous subcommittee meeting. Um, and then the committee that, that followed, you know, with the um, erosion and sediment control inspections, you know, how Jack was talking about all of that, um, you know, the city officials on site, not necessarily um, having the knowledge to enforce the actual code. Um, and you talked a little bit about that where they, there's an opportunity, right, to, to potentially put something in place there, but then it needs, um, it's like water control board approval. I don't know if you remember that, Tim, like. To redefine um, what um, one of the criteria is, yeah, we would need to have, either to have enhanced standards or to define like critical root zone or, um, yeah, it would have to be kind of approved by the state water control board for, for us to have a local ordinance that's different. Yeah. And um, and so that's so that's sorry. So so that to me is like having like having some more codification in place for the actual like inspection and enforcement is probably of the utmost importance because otherwise we're just saying like, hey, change this code. But if it's not, you know. Yeah. If nothing's done with it, then what are we what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Right, like that. I think that's that's got to be up there um, with, with with what uh, with what we provide. Mm -hmm. then, is it going to need additional opportunity for citizen participation? So a neighbor who's concerned about particular trees on a, a construction site when do they get to have their input? Well, currently there's like a site plan conference, um, right. kind of like a review process that's open to the public. You have, you have to kind of follow it yes. regularly to kind of see what's coming up and participate in their in the daytime. It's, it's not like the most uh, inclusive or kind of like most accessible way to do it but you know a lot of these site plans are either by right development or pursuant to a zoning process that's already been completed like special use permit or rezoning so you know that once you get to a site plan it's typically just administrative level right. review. like are we meeting the boxes that are set up by the ordinance check 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 um but that's a fair question. Yeah, in terms of yeah. like when can when can residents, when can community members uh, be engaged and weigh in on things that are really going to impact them, their quality of life. Yeah, I've got a development in my neighborhood that I've been following, and I just got the site plans, and they're proposing to cut down practically every single tree. Um, and so I'm trying to decide, well, how do I deal with that? Just me, you know, and do I need to? you know, get an arborist involved to give more expert opinion about those particular trees or just submit my comments saying, you know, I like these trees and I don't want them cut down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know, but I, I know another set of issues, and this might get into more of the design and standards issues are, um, Mark, you raised this. It's, a, it's about building facades and setbacks, right? And like allowing space for tree lawns. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can require that a certain percentage of the frontage of a site have um, a partial setback to enable at least like a canopy tree, you know, or or we could recommend that such a thing be incentivized. You know, if you if you step back at ground level for a certain percentage of your road frontage, then I don't know what the incentive would be, but um, right. setting it up more as an incentive for more creative development um, that would yeah. lead to a more sustainable site. I think it would it would help us to have as sort of one of our shared documents or images, you know, a sort of typical downtown street se uh, section, and and kind of similar to what they've um, used for for a lot of the uh, smart scale projects, where you have a dimension for the right of way and a dimension for the um, you know the setbacks, just so. You know, I, I'm hopeful that the consultant would communicate using that, but it's a it's a little bit of a kind of professional tool, but you don't really see the issues until you sort of cut this cross section through a street. And I'm talking just about street mm -hmm. trees. So, you know, so to your point, I, you know, what, what occurred to me is that, um, you know, and, 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 and Brian will remember this from, from one of the smart scale uh, projects we worked on that we can, if our goal is to increase the tree canopy and, and, and a scenario like you suggested that, you know, maybe there's a, a step back that allows a, a tree, you know, on the property and that's traded for something um, as, as part of an application or that it doesn't, I guess what I'm trying to get around to saying is it doesn't have to be a neat symmetrical alley of trees at the curb as much as the city would like to have that, you know, and as much as a, you know, as an architect, I, I like that I understand why we would like to have tree lined streets with a certain amount of uniformity on them. But if we can't have that, it doesn't mean we should just take our ball and go home. Um, so there may be opportunities and it's, it's almost like asking the question, well, how can we get some big trees on this street now, you know, what's going to allow that to happen. And, and I, I would enjoy having that conversation with the consultants and sort of, instead of coming up with an answer for them, say, what in the code will allow a large canopy tree to be in the public realm in a new downtown development where there's no setback requirement? <laughs> and, and they won't have an answer. Um, it's, it's, it's a very tricky thing. You know, because it's worth a lot of money. You slice, you know, five feet of of uh, whatever the cost per square foot of a new luxury condominium apartment building that's, you know, eight stories tall. That's a lot of income. And and that might go to the to the point where the kind of tree bank or tree funds is something that we also think about. Um, whereas if, if it just doesn't happen on a particular downtown development, they should have to put in um, to a city fund to, you know, put that large canopy tree potentially elsewhere in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I could see us. I could see us identifying appropriate locations for that so that they don't just put it out in Greenbrier. Right. You know. But it might be something we could do is kind of map like when we say downtown, we mean with like within the same zoning district or something within the state. Yeah, yeah, within the same zoning district or or using um, Mike's um, tree rating that that he's been talking about. Um, you know, so the area, you know, a, a high level area of, of potential replacement or potentially, you know, using um, the list of um, ash trees that, that we're going to um, use in the future and and identify like you know those high risk um, ash trees that are going to have to be replaced in the next two to five years something along yeah. those lines 
that's an interesting that last point mm -hmm. you just made is really worth thinking about carefully because we know from like the budget requests that the ash tree removal is the removal request it's not a replacement request it's sort of right you look at those separate right. so maybe when we're taking points and you know this tree is coming down and this point gps coordinate and these three over there maybe that layer could also be used to say that's where we should target this um alternative tree location thing i mean i think it's important to get trees in the built environment especially in right. the downtown but to mark's point it's incredibly complicated it's very consequential to a pro forma and so if people aren't, if developers and applicants aren't going to put trees in their site, I think, I think the alternative is to have multiple other trees in other places. And they should be in these sort of strategic prioritized areas, um, whether it's a low canopy mm -hmm. neighborhood or, um, you know, to help replace ash trees that have to come down. I mean, those are two good maybe places to start. Um, maybe parks and other public greenways or parklands would be kind of like a notch below in priority, but a feasible alternative. Um, yeah. do, do we do we know um, like where Mike is as far as like just because uh, that number rating that that he's mentioned as far as like the it's not completely developed or finalized yet, right? From from my understanding. Was this for planting or for removal? I think it was for re for replacement. Uh -huh. Right? Or I, I, I think it was planting in general, but I'm not positive. Planting? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I had the answer, but I think it was like just the planting plan in general. Um, when, when I first started on the commission, there this is this would be a good thing to, to uh, put in my margin here to, to ask Paul about it. There was what to me was a really interesting conversation about about sort of how we how do we decide where the best very best place to plant street trees is and it was like a combination of you know no utility lines and and you know sufficient um you know setback of buildings and and and, and mike can probably we could, we could probably with a map so another tool we could have, we could identify, you know, if there's a street that only has power lines on one side of the street, or, you know, the major power lines are on one side, it, you know, it's, it comes down to whether or not the city itself is willing to actually take on planting a, a canopy tree under a power line, which it, it's generally not. Was, was that, uh, were those variables factored into that rating? I, I'm trying to like frenetically find one of the um, uh, the monthly uh, commission meeting packets where where Mike kind of describes what that rating system was going to be like, but I, I'm not it's, finding it right now. It's not ringing a bell for me, but I but I have the same memory. <laughs> I mean, it's, it rings the bell, but there's no you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, that like. Um, so finding out like when that might be finalized would be important and kind of, yeah, using that in relation to the, to the ash thing, which I, like, maybe that's an, an additional variable for him to add into that rating system just in general. But, um, yeah, it seems to me like the, uh, the enforcement, um, like on-site enforcement, and then this idea of um, if if trees are being removed, like Vicky, like your um, your development that you're talking about, how do we account for that? Like those those two things are, I, I think probably like theoretically the the some of the the two big things to go um, to go forward with, um, and then get into the more detailed stuff from there the enforcement and then the yeah the um, reciprocation or not not that it's been it's been a long computer day <laughs> but, but yeah i you might just you might just 
I have a, um, a, a question looking, also looking back through my email because when Jeff, when you were describing this meeting with the city and the relationship between changing, like when it was in the context of soil volumes, your example uh, of, uh, it was with, um, we were meeting with, I don't remember who your meeting was with, but. So it was, but, yeah, it was, Je it was Jack and Missy. I think we're both. Um, right. Jack Dawson and, and Missy Creasy. So yeah, I, I would love to be able to be fluent enough to kind of have the, the conclusions of that meeting at my fingertips. And I don't know how to do that. I mean, I, I but, it, but you, there, there, are, there are some, like for future generations, we need to leave that conversation in a kind of form or a summary of it somehow. And maybe that's, maybe the spreadsheet, the matrix that you created, which I would love to find, if you can send me a copy of it. Yeah, this um, you know, so, is enough to say, here's where we ran into a dead end. So for the next codes committee, don't try to do this again because Jack Dawson says it's against the law. Yeah, the, the Google, so yeah, the Google sheet, um, I think was, is like kind of one of um, Paul's last things is he added, um, and Mark, I think, I think you are, um, uh, you do have edit access I was, to it. You want me to resend it to you um, real quick? That would be great. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. Um, now or after, or after the meeting, just because it's exactly the thing that I can never get my hands on. If I, I just, um, you know, I just search for everything that. Um, if you're, Tim if is you're, if you're in, if you're in Gmail, if you go up yeah. to like the right hand corner um, with, you know, like the Google Apps, um, uh, yeah. kind of button. And, and scroll over to sheets and then you can just search um, tree commission and that should pop up for it should pop up for you. Wow okay yeah I, I got would. it um, I don't have it yet but I, I know I know how to get it. Yeah but so one of I think probably one of Paul's like last things yeah. that um, the that first he did thing was, up. yeah it's July 11th there it yeah. is. Yeah, um, was add column G, which was the NDS kind of response based on um, the meeting that we had and, and kind of the questions that, that we went over with them. Um, I'm, and I'm a horrible note taker. I have, some, <laughs> I have some notes. They are not great, but this is probably, um, probably is about as formalized as it gets unless Tim, you, you have um, something else a little bit more detailed apart from the uh, this Google sheet. I think I think okay, so this Google sheet was serving multiple purposes. I think it was kind of a comprehensive catch-all. I think you know there's a lot of work. There's a lot of content in here related to the work of the standards and design manual. Um, we might want to try to harvest from this Google sheet and get it into a document that's more squarely focused on like our immediate task or opportunity, which is providing feedback on the code audit and uh, rewrite. Um, but I, I think there's a tremendous amount of good work that's represented in that spreadsheet. And then oh, I, 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 I agree. It definitely needs to be di distilled. Um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's extensive to say the least. But I think, yeah, I think like you said, distilling and refining it down to like, you know, we probably don't have that many uh, actual issues that we want to see improvement on. It's just that there's a lot of examples and specifics under each of those, but it'll be key mm -hmm. for us to kind of clearly highlight, okay, we want better plan review and then there's things related to that. We want better inspections and enforcement and there's things related to that. If we can make make sure we get those high level punchy little statements clear, yeah. that is gonna help build momentum and, and just provide yeah. clarity. Yeah. It's, it's, a it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the three it's the three things. It's 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 the plan review, it's the inspection enforcement, and then it's what happens if you you know, mess up that enforcement, like the penalty, not, 
I don't want to say like penalty because that's that's not like the, the path to go, but I'll get like where do you put into the fund? Um, now I'm trying to I'm trying to find like the, the right word for it that doesn't sound so negative. Like well, remediation it's or something. Remediate, yeah, remediate, yeah, remediation. Um, yeah. site plan review, inspection and enforcement and remediation. Yeah, I'm like halfway taking notes here, and I couldn't come up with anything better than tree replacement penalty fund. Um, <laughs> we can massage that definitely, but but that's the gist of it. Is there needs to be a good you know a, a, a good bar set for tree plantings and landscape plan requirements, minimum standards. I think it'd be great if we could have the code team help provide examples of how we could incentivize like bonus level landscape plans or planting plans. And then on the kind of flip side of that same issue is if you don't meet the minimum standards, then there might be sites where it's just not possible to have a viable project or there's you know, peculiarities with the way the lot is shaped or something. And we need to have a, a release valve, but it needs to kind of work in the public's favor. You know, if you can't put your four minimum required street trees along your frontage, I think, in my opinion, we should be pushing for, then you pay into this fund for more than the equivalent of four trees, or you, you, you cause that more than four trees to be planted in one of our strategic, right. strategic areas, whether it's low canopy, mm -hmm. uh, ash tree replacement zone, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And if uh, existing trees are taken out, would you require more uh, new trees to be planted for each existing tree, large tree? I, I think I think that's one of the things that that we need to research. Right, is like looking at other municipalities and um, kind of getting a sense of where the, yeah. the progressive um, kind of um, uh, where the progressive municipalities, what they're doing, and and right. try to see what what makes sense for us. Are you familiar with the Virginia Tree Ordinance database? It's don't a website. Think so. Yeah, I don't oh, think so. This is great. It's a website that has links to the tree ordinances in various municipalities in the state, and it also has links to the state code limitations on you know city ordinances. The site is um, vtod.frec.vt.edu. So it's yep. connected with Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, cool. Yeah, no, uh, it's, um, for, yeah, first time I'm seeing it. Oh, okay. That's awesome. And I think one of the committees have done some work and identified Norfolk as like a really solid tree ordinance. Um, so it might be worth just getting a copy of that and passing it along as an attachment whenever we do compile our feedback. Yeah. Um, or we can comb through it a little more strategically and, and you know provide certain sections or examples yeah. of things that work well. But um, yeah. I'm sure I have a copy of that one. It should be easy to get, especially for a, a, a big a order. Um, yeah. That was that what I remember was Doug Eman, who was our parks and rec liaison at the time, kind of waved it around and said, I'd love to be able to enforce it like they do. You know, we need something like this. I thought, well, that was pretty cool that the city really wants our help to do that, but I guess it's complicated. Yeah, um, I actually just, uh, Brian, um, Brian sent um, some files, uh, which includes Norfolk code back in um, February. So let me forward this to you all. Um, and um, if it's not in, you know, let's, let's, let's start that. So do we have access? Can we um, create a folder in Teams? Like Mark, could you do that 
right now, or do we need Mike to? I did it. Uh, I did it while we were speaking earlier. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll forward I'll forward this right now. This 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 got uh, this has some good stuff in it here. Uh, w one thing that's a little weird about Teams is it seems like you can't have subfolders. So um, I had created one for the standards and design manual, and I tried to put it in the codes committee folder, and I couldn't seem to move one folder into another, which seems amazing for a Microsoft product. But there you are. <laughs> Maybe you can create a new folder, but not move it between different folders. I don't know if that would make any difference, but yeah, I think folder. Really Sorry. Well, naming the folder might, you know, by naming them or numbering them or something might help us. I haven't yeah. played around with that enough to figure it out. Yeah, the one thing I noticed about that item K, which is like the tree ordinance, it's kind of labeled the tree ordinance, which is just a compilation of all the different sections. I did, isn't that dated like 2011? Um, or it's pulling from the city code from the 2011 version. I, I, I might be wrong, but the one time I was able to get into Teams and look around in our documents library, I felt like that was referencing something that's potentially outdated. Um, uh, it's possible. Well, I, think, I, I think that that there are a whole series of footnotes for every you know, for many of the paragraphs about whether something was deleted or altered. And, you know, some of those dates are even older than 2011, but it's a, it's a good question. And maybe something that, um, well, it would be, it'd be fairly simple to actually check it against what's online. It, you're, you're right that it's dangerous to have a Word document of something that, that otherwise is being continuously updated <laughs> on the yeah. console. Yeah. You know, like for, like for instance, I um one of the th the things that I just sent you guys is something that um uh, Brian forwarded um and like this could have been from like a couple years ago. It's just a zip file entitled Code Audit, and there's just comments and a whole bunch of stuff from from well before I was on the commission. Um, and I don't even think I've I've had a chance to to go through this. But good to have it at least in one, like in one place for us to, to reference. I think that code audit zip file included the things that were in the other group of documents you forwarded. I remember looking through this and seeing that there was like redundancy. Um, and I think those things are on, I think they're uploaded to Teams now. So don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but I remember like the one time I've tried to wade through this stuff, I kind of, that's what I picked up on. Um, yeah, some some of it is, I think, but not not all of it. And of course, I guess the danger is that we don't we certainly don't want to fill up our folder with things that are just sort of general reference. But um, at the same time, you know, it's good to good to be able to track um, the key documents. Yeah, it would be nice to have subfolders so you can so we can have a, a folder entitled like holds reference material. <laughs> And then have, you know, something that like a folder that we're working on that is current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I put in the folder Brian sent to him and me related to the master tree list and it was just some detail where my math brain saw a formula that didn't make sense to me and, and in the spreadsheet. And so I'm assigning that to myself to kind of figure it out. Um, and, and I, but I, but I left the I put a copy of the master tree list in that, in that uh, spreadsheet in our folder until I, until I do figure it out. I just want to use Teams as, as my filing system instead of my desktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it we're may not be that you know using. That. Sorry, Mark. I was just. I was just going to say it maybe that just continuing to use like a Google Sheet is another thing to do instead of going into Teams because it might be that 
like since that turned out to be so easy for me to get to <laughs> if we were to ever kind of add to or alter that uh, site plan review uh, Google sheet you know there's, we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, necessarily try to replicate it in teams for just for no yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, uh, like honestly, honestly, we can just add um, a, an additional page to this sheet yeah. where we have where we have this thing distilled, um, just so it is all in one place and we don't have to mess around. Um, it, it's super super easy to get to, and we can just you know click tabs back and forth to see, um, you know, see kind of the master spreadsheet versus um the the kind of distilled version so one of the one of the reasons that um that i had backed off of this committee initially um in addition to just over commitment was that it's um that it's awkward for me to get very involved in in personally sending in site plan comments when my livelihood, my firm and, you know, professionally is, you know, depends on developers and relationships with civil engineers and landscape architects and other architects. So I really do not want to be on the front lines of our site plan review uh, team, but, um, but I'm happy because it probably, you know, it's probably something my skill set is suited to. Uh, I'm just not sure how much we're going to get involved with trying to review one site plan after another. For a while there, it was, it was kind of uh, an amazing pipeline of stuff to try to take on. And, and Paul was pretty busy, sort of like a video game trying to, you know, shoot down the invading aliens. Um, so I, I don't know what our ambition is for like engaging as a group in site plan review. Um, as, a, as an extension of Mike, but um, I haven't heard that notion come up and yet it, it was something we were doing for a while. Um, and, and this and, your, and the work and the spreadsheet, which I looked up and printed out now I have my printed copy, you know, destroying trees in the process. Um, but but um, so that's a rhetorical question for the group is like is part of our end game so that we can actually engage in site plans that are being sent to us or was that something we um, decided we're just simply helping the city do their job better so i think it's i think it's been a clear shift right uh, to where that's not been happening um like two city manager two city managers ago two right. or three maybe at this point <laughs> right they stopped forwarding them right yeah yeah so advi advisory only. I don't think we're really at this point going to. I mean, have access to any any actual real world plans for the foreseeable future, right? I mean, I doesn't yeah. seem like it. Yeah, I think unless we get involved in the site plan conferences, or if the city adopts more of like a digital online based permit tracking system. You know, obviously that's open to the public for those who are interested in searching and tracking along with those types of things. You know, we would be able to kind of participate that way, but yeah, Jeff, I think you're right. We're not doing, we're not being deliberately included in. I, I, I do remember, I do remember Missy saying something about they were like overhauling their online system right at either like the i don't think it was the subcommittee uh meeting that we had but it was the probably the follow-up um but i i haven't i haven't looked on the website to see if, if, if that's happened or don't know what the status is there yeah i think that's been like a multi-year push it's just such a transformation of you know, business operation during a very busy and complicated time. Yeah, yeah, that, okay, yeah, my, my, my chicken scratch. So at, at our, um, at our meeting on the 22nd, um, I think it was indicated that, um, 
that they were supposedly choosing a, a bid winner um, for the for the rehaul process. So, I mean, probably still months out until something changes. If if they were if they hadn't even been engaged in you know in an award oh. yet, but no, um, it would be cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I don't want to transition to next steps too quickly, but I'm just also thinking about how we want to capture this discussion and, and build on it. And I think, you know, adding a new page to that Google Sheet to kind of start the harvesting and reorg and refinement process would be fine. I also wonder, like, if we want to um, start like a PowerPoint and have a slide for each of those main things and maybe break off additional slides for each kind of heading of inspections and enforcement or minimum standards. But if we're going to have to end up communicating this publicly, at least to the steering committee, to the consultants, maybe eventually kind of more widespread to potentially build a constituency, I kind of think maybe we should try to get this organized into slides um, so that we can then add visuals as we go, you know, examples of what need, of why changes are needed or examples of things that work well elsewhere, whatever. Um, would there be openness to kind of trying to throw some of this kind of the rough outlines of this discussion into like a PowerPoint slide as maybe one of our next steps? Yes, that's a thumb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I'm happy to take the first swing at that and it, if I can get it on a Teams. I tried to log on to Teams while we were meeting and I, I think it's going to take more focus and maybe some password resetting or something. I don't know. Um, but I do. I, I, I probably put like 40 minutes into trying to figure it out. And uh, yeah. It's, so okay. even if we just have to pass a PowerPoint. Well, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure we can do it. We we can do it via good via Google, right? Um, um, you know, before our September commission meeting, um, maybe that's where we start next. Is just to try to like a, a clean start with the big picture initiatives or or kind of like more specific topics and issues within that big push each of the big pushes um, and just building off of that. Um, you were you were a little choppy, Tim, um, there, but um, could we, like, I guess to start use Google Slides as kind of like the kind of group PowerPoint and, and, that, and that'll give us, um, you know, like one place to comment, like we can comment on each other's slides. Um, do you want to do the full pass or should we kind of break it down into like some sections where, you know, we kind of have, we don't have four necessarily, but we could probably get four. We can kind of like site plan review, minimum standards, inspection enforcement, and then remediation. Should we kind of maybe break, um, Break them up into into like kind of four. Try to get four units, and then you know each of us focus on on one, and then kind of collaborate from 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 that initial pass. That would be good. So we could all have a lesser load, but also still all be involved and have a role. Um, I would just say maybe the front end of that would be collaborating on like the outline and getting the right organization of like talking points, like the really, really well distilled talking points, which then have a lot of components to each of them. Um, yeah, that might be, I think like the best way to like chart a successful path forward to do individual work. Mm -hmm. Um, I because I don't know if I I don't know if the four things you just mentioned are like maybe the right calibration of those ideas. Um, I I haven't done that work either, but maybe that's what we could start doing is putting some thought into 
the organization of how to get these ideas organized right, um, kind of grouped and organized and named most effectively. I, I think, I, you know, I like working with PowerPoints and I don't do it as much as I used to, um, but I, for me, it really helps organize thinking. And one of the tricks we've already sort of done very well in the spreadsheet is, you know, asking a question that we find ourselves asking over and over again and sort of like a slide kind of corresponds to a question that somebody might ask a lot, you know, and then we do our best to try to answer, to, you know, to answer that with a statement and maybe then the deck evolves into a series of statements, but like getting into it to get kind of to peak curiosity and create energy starting with questions is often a good thing to do. And I don't really know what what my questions are right now, um, but I think I'll, you know, between now and our next get together, I may have a better idea about what I really want to know the answer to. <laughs> So do you guys think um, like a Google Slides, which is basically like power, like shared PowerPoint would be a, a good avenue to, to, to kind of build, uh, kind of to build towards where we're going to go? I'm good with that. I, I'm not familiar, but I'm sure it's user friendly enough to kind of, you know, stumble forward. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it right I'm oh, sorry. I'm looking at it right now, and I mean, it, it's it looks like it's pretty similar to, um, you know, just Microsoft PowerPoint, but you can add comments and, um, you know, it, it's it's a collaborative PowerPoint, basically what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be an easy way to do it. An effective way to do it too. Let's I guess, you know, our, our priority, you know, is to figure out like what kinds of things we want to get in front of the, the city and the consultant team as we head into the zoning code rewrite portion of the process. So that may not be, may not be what our priority is, I don't know. Um, are, are we going to have a, another chance to meet as a subcommittee before the next uh, commission meeting? I, I seem to recall Brian saying that we would have August committee opportunities. I don't know if it's limited to two. And I can see, oh, well, based on that link I got that wasn't for tonight, it looks like the other two committees are having a joint meeting on the second. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, you know, there might be just one opportunity left. Um, so maybe we should circle back to Brian and just kind of loop him in, debrief him on this discussion. And um, yeah, sort of strategize the next committee meeting. Mm -hmm. assuming that's possible before September. Yeah. Um, but I guess we would be able to do, you know, like actual work and collaboration outside of the meeting. If it's just working on a document, um, sharing comments, that kind of stuff. I don't think that's, I don't think that's like a meeting per se, if we're not live interacting. Um, I don't want to violate these notices and like, you know, 
transparency laws like that's all important it's all important but but we have to do work too so it's kind of a gray area I guess. for sure um, and, and the, the work is time sensitive i mean as we were saying we want to do this at the right time and sooner rather than later is um, the best Tim, were, were you going to take a pass at an outline? Like, I suppose we could be working with slides, but it would be helpful to just have a, it could be an email, it could be attached to this site plan review checklist document, but sort of an outline of what the PowerPoint deck might, how that structure yeah. would work. I mean, that would be, that's a next step that I'm not sure I know what I would do exactly, but. Um, um, I just. Again. I just shared, I, I just created um, the slides and just shared it with you guys, the link, so you can see kind of what I'm looking at. Um, if you go to your, you know, your, your uh, Gmail and go up to the apps in the upper right, kind of similar to, to what you did in Google Sheet, if you just um, search for slides, that should be it, or you, you probably got an email invite and you can just click on that link. Oh, there it is. Look at that. And a bunch of other stuff I haven't seen in years. <laughs> um, yeah, to answer your question, uh, I don't know quite how this works. If it is going to update live, like if I modify a slide or something, um, like I just I just saw you upload like I just saw that kind of go live yeah so it is it is pretty much immediate mm -hmm. yeah I hit share as if that was like pushing it out to you guys but it looks like it just automatically you know updates yeah and you, and you can like present the screen too like do a, like a screen share um, kind of situation mm -hmm. yeah in lieu in lieu of doing that I just went ahead and pasted the kind of halfway notes I've been trying to capture. These are not fully fleshed out and the language might need to be massaged. And even like the headings, I don't know if these are the right headings, the way to think about how to combine these. Um, this is definitely a rough draft. You know, rough draft. Cool, that's great. Your work is done. <laughs> I, my mind is telling me that my work is done. It's telling me to go get dinner. Um, yes, time for dinner. <laughs> time for dinner. I, I second. But this is going to be, I think, a good workspace for us. Um, yeah. Just to start generating some of these ideas and building off them because yeah. we kind of needed this. I think we needed this recap, this reset to kind of refocus, especially with Vicky being a new committee member. Um, but a lot of this is not new territory. So mm -hmm. thinking about how to form these thoughts into the right groupings and organization, I think is really critical. And then what comes after that is kind of, like I said, not that new um, of content or territory for us. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, shall we adjourn? Very rough. I have a very rough draft. Like, <laughs> like it. Yeah. Where, yeah, it's fitting. Good. And, um, and Jeff, we just need to like go back to that same, kind of the same instructions you said using Gmail, just like open up the apps and look for docs or something. Sorry, what, sorry, what, what's him? Um, I just want to make sure I know how to get back here. So, oh yeah, yeah. So if you're in your Gmail account, you go up to the upper right hand corner with the, um, uh, with the nine dots where like the Google app, um, button. And then depending on how your, um, Gmail account is set up, um, it might be buried a little bit, but. Um, it'll just be like the yellow icon that says slides. Okay. Sounds painless. I yeah. should know this, but 
learning. Well, I, I couldn't I couldn't su successfully log on to Microsoft Teams, so could, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't have to be the forever solution, but we are kind of needing to to spin our wheels here, so we gain some traction. So yeah, um, it's a good start. Thanks for setting that up. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, yeah, let's let's kind of let this sink in and, and, and process it and let's just be, you know, modifying that outline. And I'd say, you know, don't hold back. If you've got stuff you want to add to the next slide and the next slide, let's be doing it. And, and we'll, I guess we can check back in with Brian and give him a quick debrief and try to identify it like a committee meeting time for uh, August. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Sounds good, guys. All right. Thanks to thank each of you. And thank, thank you, Joe. Much appreciated. Thanks, Joe. Yes, thanks, Joe, for <laughs> hanging out with us. Have a good evening, guys. All right. Good night. Good. You too. Good. Don't matter. Right. <laughs>